Welcome back to Campus Connect. I'm your host, Ed Yaw, and I'm joined by Brian Alexak, who is the chair of our Department of uh, Landscape and Horticulture Technology. And we're standing in front of our new uh, landscape and horticulture building, LHT, as we fondly refer to it. We're very excited about this building and its many features that we'll be talking about uh, through the course of this uh, segment. So first of all, Brian, tell us a little bit about the uh, geothermal system that uh, provides some of the energy for this building. Uh, the, be the building is uh, heating and cooled by geothermal. Uh, there are wells which are drilled uh, underneath. Um, basically, they go 500 feet. Um, it makes use of the fact that uh, the uh, temperature of the subsoil stays fairly between uh, 40, 70 degrees, so much different than what is up above. So in the summertime, when it's hot outside, you can actually force the hot air from the building down underground and cool the building, much like a refrigerator. In the wintertime, it's the opposite. It actually brings up that warmed air, compresses it, um, basically uh, warms up the air inside, and that heats the building. And another feature that we're excited about is the roofing system. There are two different types of roofing that we have here. The first is the sloped uh, photovoltaic. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit of how that works and what kind of energy it uh, expected to produce. Right. We have solar panels on one section of roof, and that's going to basically uh, support 20% uh, of our energy use for this building. Uh, the other uh, part of the roof, which is kind of interesting, is the vegetative roof. Yes. Uh, it's the flat roof. Um, vegetative roofs are uh, usually there's some species of plants which are grown. We have sedums and alliums on our roof. Um, there are a series of flats which are interlocked together like a jigsaw puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, basically, these plants are completely winter hardy. They uh, can uh, withstand drought in the summertime, so if we go through several weeks with no rain, the plants will live. Basically what they do is they act as insulation so that rather than heating a roof and making that black roof even hotter mm -hmm. and then having to run air conditioner to, to uh, cool down your building, you're using the plant's natural ability to uh, cool off the roof. Um, plants have evapotranspiration, which means that they'll take in the heat and then basically uh, dissipate it uh, as they transpire. So okay. using, using nature's wonders to control right. our building. Yes, another uh, feature that involves water, of course, is the cistern system that we have. Can you tell us a little bit about that and its function? We have two cisterns. They're capable of holding 2,800 gallons of water. Uh, we use them for rooftop collection of water. Um, that water is going to be used for the landscape plantings around the building, and also it can be uh, funneled into the greenhouses here. One exciting thing about this is, in some cases, I've seen operations where you actually get a better grade of water coming off the roof. It can be slightly acidic, which is actually better for plants. So we actually look at this as another one of nature's wonders. Those are very exciting features. Uh, let's talk about the building itself, and let's go inside and take a look. Okay, we're inside the building now, and uh, Brian, before we talk about the design studio that we're currently in, tell us about the rest of the building. Uh, we've got four classrooms here in the building. This is the design studio. Across the hall we have a computer room. In the back we have two classrooms which make up our exploratory classroom. A uh, beautiful conference room, office space, um, and one of the most beautiful places is actually the hallway which, which runs down which is all glass and you can look uh, over the pond. Mm -hmm. That's great. Now tell us about the design studio, the one that we're in, what, what happens here. This is our design studio. Um, in our curriculum we use both um, hand graphics, you know, hand drawing, but also computer-aided design. So it's equipped with both. We have both the tables and the computer stations here. As you look around the room you can see a lot of the students' drawings uh, you know, from this semester. One of the nice features about this room, uh, you have a lot of natural light coming into the room. You have the clear story windows which are filtered. Um, that's part of the uh, daylight harvesting system we have here in the building. Mm -hmm. So if you look up, you will see periodically sensors. The sensors can actually register the light coming into the building, not just from outside, but the reflective quality of the light coming mm -hmm. off the tables. From that, they can adjust the lights down, so you're not using the electricity you normally would. So that's, uh, all the rooms are outfitted with that, so it's our daylight harvesting system. That's a very exciting uh a feature to the building. Tell us a little bit about the uh, exploratory uh, lab and some of the things that happen in there. The exploratory lab is primarily used for our, our dirty classrooms, mm -hmm. so um, horticultural soils, plant pest management, plant science. Um, students in there learn everything about the physiology of plants, mm -hmm. about soils, uh, structural properties of soils. So that's uh, what we consider to be our, our dirt lab per se. Right, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. That concludes our tour. Brian, thank you very much for your hospitality and for all the information you provided. Now let's move to the ribbon cutting. On October 26th, County College of Morris's Board of Trustees 
hosted a grand opening and ribbon-cutting celebration for the college's new Landscape and Horticultural Technology Building. The new 7,200-square-foot facility is slated to become CCM's first Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, or LEED, certified facility. Constructed according to LEED program standards, LEED is an internationally recognized rating system that awards points for environmentally sustainable building practices. The new LHT building meets criteria for gold standard, the second highest rating provided by the U.S. Green Building Council. CCM President Dr. Edward Yaw cut the ribbon and addressed a gathered crowd of nearly 100. I did want to first of all thank uh, our trustees and the freeholders for their support uh, on this project. This is a project that was completed with Chapter 12 funding, which involves funding from the state and from the county, and we're very grateful to, to them uh, for, that, uh, for that support. The ribbon cutting was followed by a reception and open house, in which visitors were encouraged to tour the new landscape and horticultural technology building and grounds, which include two new greenhouse facilities.